Greetings. In this video, I will show you how to derive the canonical distribution, which is a probability distribution function for the canonical ensemble. This tells us the probability of observing the assembly in a state that's specified by its energy. The denominator of the canonical distribution, Q, is so useful that it has its own name, the canonical partition function. To set up this derivation, we have to make two assumptions. Number one, that physics can be treated statistically and thus entropy is maximized. This is just a statement of the second law of thermodynamics. Assumption number two is that entropy takes this form as written down by Gibbs. If you prefer, you can make three simpler assumptions to drive this equation as described in video number one. In addition, there are some definitions we need which don't add any new physical concepts. Number one, when we say probabilities, we mean a set of positive real numbers that add up to one. Number two, the canonical ensemble is a closed thermodynamic system with a definable average energy. It doesn't mean that the energy is fixed, just that its average is defined. Number three, there's also this thing we call temperature that tells us how adding energy to the system changes its entropy. We're done with the setup. In the next part, we use the Lagrange function formalism to maximize the entropy, S equals minus K sum pi log pi subject to two constraints on the probability distribution and the average energy. For a brief review of Lagrange multipliers, please see the document linked below. We start by defining the Lagrange function, which is the thing you're trying to maximize minus the Lagrange multiplier, lambda or beta in our case, times the constraint equation. After filling this in, we're ready to do some derivatives. We're looking for the final form of pi that satisfies these equations, setting derivatives of the Lagrange function to zero. Let's start with partial j partial pi. This is actually a whole list of derivatives, one for every pi. Without loss of generality, we can just take the derivative with respect to p1. This trick collapses all of the sums to just one term each. Next, we apply the product rule remembering what the derivative of a log is, and solve for p1. Once we have p1, we can immediately write down the general form for pi. All right, on to the next derivative of the Lagrange function, partial j partial lambda. We'd like to solve for lambda to eliminate it from pi. If you do so, you'll get some complicated thing with the log of a sum, yada yada. I'd like to show you a shortcut. First, we can split the exponential up into two terms, one that has the lambda that we are trying to eliminate, and one that has all of the i dependents. We can pull the lambda term, which is constant, out of the sum. If we look at the relationship between these, we see that the lambda term is equal to 1 divided by the sum term. The left-hand side of this equation, exponential of minus lambda over kb minus 1, is just the form that lambda takes in pi so it's very easy to eliminate it. We can make this clear by splitting the pi up in this way. When we do that, voila, it looks like we're done. We used all of the assumptions and all the definitions. We've maximized the Gibbs entropy subject to all the constraints, but uh, oops, we don't have temperature in there yet. I think temperature is gonna be important. We have a definition of temperature based on the change in entropy. So let's see what our new form of pi tells us about the entropy. Starting with the Gibbs entropy, I'm going to leave the first pi as it is because this is just the form of an expected value for a probability distribution. For the second pi, the one being logged, we can split it up into the difference of two terms. Of course, the log and the exponential are inverse operations, and so we can simplify this. What we're left with is just the expected value of beta times ei and k times the expected value of log q. But note that log q is the result of summing all the ei, and so it's a constant with respect to this sum. This gives us a nice and simple form for the entropy, which makes it easy to relate beta to temperature. Now we can substitute the Lagrange multiplier beta for its true form, 1 over t, and that's it. 